the dad i'm maura i'm the mom and i'm arthur i'm the son and together we are family, family plot. plot very nice uh but before we get on with any of the housekeeping this week we have a very special guest please welcome the woman that got me involved with saint joe pride and herself for quite a long time my adopted sister amateur historian debbie baker Ready. So, um, thanks for joining us on this uh, episode that I didn't realize that a, a huge portion of the end of it happened anywhere near us, but kind of did. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know they they had a firefight in, in Platte City. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah, uh, there's a plaque out there, isn't there? There might be, I don't know. I didn't I spend a lot of time walking around up there I because it's like, it, it's it's bush country. And it was then. Yeah. And I don't mean the beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Um, if you want to support the show, a couple of ways you can do that. There's You can do it through monthly donations at Patreon. We only have two levels, $1 or $3, but both get... Uh, special editions of this show. Uh, the very few times, well, we lately started recording just the local recordings, us three on video. And you, when we do that, you will get those if you're a $3 donate, if you donate $3 a month. Uh, but you still get ad free episodes of everything else, uh, if you're a dollar person. So, and then of course, uh, uh, our own Arthur will throw in art sometimes and digital stuff. And so, yeah, lots of stuff good for being our, in our Patreon family. If you cannot do a monthly donation, which I totally understand, oh, yeah. none of us here are millionaires, uh, you can do a dollar or two through a site called Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, and if you enjoy the show, please share it on social media. Share it with friends. Share it with family. With, with everyone. everyone. And if you don't enjoy the show, please keep, keep it, it to yourself. yourself. So uh, what are we talking about? Uh, well, I already sort of spilled the beans on it. We go back to take a look at a tale of love, a tale of true crime. And we go back and meet Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, two people who fell in love around the time of the Great Depression. Well, and also robbed banks and a lot of other places, became wanted in multiple states, and eventually died to hell of gunfire and went on to become American icons in this sometimes love is so weird historical true crime episode of the Family Plot Podcast. All right. So this is going to be fun and, well, I mean, a little sad. I, I don't. Mass murders aren't necessarily fun, but before we go too far into that, so we are talking about criminals today, yes. old dead criminals, though they may be, but to kind of even that out, we at the Family Plot Pro Podcast, we try to um, include our community and give shout outs to people in our community who do good things, who, you know, take up for the community and I wanted to share that recently, unfortunately, one of our retired K-9 officers from the Sugar Creek De Police Department, which is a suburb of Independence where we live, yep. um, unfortunately had a non-operable tumor and had to be put down last week on Friday. So we wanted to give just a family plot moment of silence to... 
um, ammo, ammo, the retired I Sugar like Creek it. police canine police mm -hmm. officer, as well as his former partner who had become his owner and send mm -hmm. all of our love to the loss of your fur friend. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> One more thing. This episode's a little different for us in that Bonnie Parker, in addition to being a lot of things, was a poet. And she wrote one fairly famous poem about the Barrow Gang. So before each section, I have borrowed a stanza of that poem that I feel ties into what you're about to talk about in some way. So you can just uh, read them out loud before you go in, or you can say, okay, well, Bonnie says this or whatever. But I, I just thought it was a way that she could sort of chime in and be on the podcast. I like it. So I'm going to start with Bonnie's words here, uh, because when I'm about to start talking about Clyde Barrow. They call them cold-blooded killers. They say they are heartless and mean. But I say this with pride, that I once knew Clyde when he was honest and upright and clean. Clyde Chestnut Barrow was the fifth of seven children, born to Henry Basil Darrow and, and I don't know if I'm going to get this right, Cumi Talitha Walker. I am guessing her parents did not like her. Maybe mom had a painful delivery. I don't. Whew, what a name. Uh, that's, 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 that's a mouthful for sure. Uh, anyway, um, they were dirt poor farmers living in Ellis County, Texas at the time. Although I will say when I first was reading about this and I saw that phrase, dirt poor farmers, I saw it, my brain dyslexied it and I went, oh, poor dirt farmers. Yeah, Before I realized, wait, you can't really farm dirt. Well, I mean, you can't, but it's got to be pretty good dirt. Yeah, it's got to be pretty good dirt. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so, yeah, they were dirt poor farmers living in Ellis County, Texas at the time, though they would later move to Dallas. Uh, March 24th, 1909 is when young Clyde was born to a close knit family, despite how poor they were. Uh, his siblings all talked about how they did everything together. They were a close family. And in those days, they didn't have Internet. So they were outside most of the day. In fact, their parents had probably had to go and find them. No, their mama would have called them when the sun was starting to come down and their butts would have been in those seats for supper. That's <coughs> how things worked around then. Could be. if they weren't in those seats, they're getting a belt to their butt. Yep, that too. Could be. Uh, but uh, their Teleco Texas farm failed due to a drought, which is why the family was forced to move to Dallas. Young Clyde was small and unassuming. Uh, but loved music and learned to play both the guitar and the saxophone. Nice. Yeah. Which which is weird to me that if this had gone another way, he could have been a 1920s Elvisy kind yep, of. Yep. Absolutely. You know, so which is why I love these historical episodes. It, it, it takes my brain places. Um, and, and peanut gallery, be silent. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> my brain's already places. So, uh, he had dreams of becoming a career musician. However, he was often influenced by his older brother, Buck. And by the age of 16, Clyde and Buck were both engaged in criminal behavior. Uh, sources did not say what specifically, but I would guess robbery mostly and petty theft, that sort of thing. Um, by the age of 20, young Clyde was already a fugitive wanted by the law in and around Dallas. So not even 21 and making friends. I like Clyde up to this point. Yeah. There will reach a point when I like him less. But right now, I like him quite a bit. But before we go any further, um, let's have a round of applause and some fanfare for Arthur's Corner. Allow me to present Arthur's Corner. Awesome. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the corner. Uh, hello, yes. Yes. good to see you. 
Um, um, how are you doing today? Pretty good. With Debbie was at Dan and Brian's wedding, weren't you? No, I didn't make it. I wasn't able to. But uh, we went to dinner up there that one time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I was, I knew, I was pretty sure you'd met Debbie. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and Arthur's been up here a couple of other times, uh, visiting dinner. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've Just, got bad memory. That's the only reason there. You're good. New you're guest good. on podcast. That's what I meant. Got you're, you. you're, okay. it's okay, Arthur. No one's trying to tear you down. I promise. So take us into your corner. Tell us all sorts of cool and interesting things. Let me learn something. So last episode, we talked just a little bit about me. Um, can you guys remember what the topic was that I said that I was going to do this week? Yes. Uh, theory and throats. Theory and thropies, theory and theory and theory and theory and theory and theory and it's all the same thing. Um, it can be said in any way, though. So, me in particular, I am two types of theory and throat. I am polytherian and cladotherian. And I will explain that in a second, but before I go into those specific types, because there are more types than that, but I am just those two types in particular, so I'm just going to talk about those because I have most experience with it. Okay. Um, I, I would guess the polytherian has to do with multiple something. Yeah. So, just because I know my Latin roots. Uh -huh. Therians are people who feel a connection with what other animals, so like birds, cats, and usually, in my case, polytherians will have not usually, but like polytherians have multiple theriotypes. Okay. So I have multiple theriotypes, like the Ardwolf, that was one of mine. Um, and you'll but, talk more about that next week. Yeah, yeah. And then Cladotherians, they are theriotypes who feel a connection with a specific species. So, like canines, mm -hmm. and it can be a specified species. So like domestic canines is mine. I feel most connection with this domestic canines. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah. There was a guy on an episode of CSI and, and I know this isn't true, but a lot of that show is actual based on actual crimes only because I watch a lot of ID and was like, Hey, yeah. I've seen that somewhere. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the, a, a murder had happened of a furry who identified as a wolf. And um, and there was another wolf they thought had done it for a while um, because that guy really identified with wolves and, and like he had been dating this guy's girlfriend for a while but before they broke up. And he's like, you know, in the wolf community, wolves mate for life. Right, and um, here they, I, there's a little bit of difference there because Therians they don't identify like officially with their like the connection with animals, like they connect with them, but like they're not identifying as them. It's sort of different, like they identify internally. Uh, and I get that, I was just saying it's that same similar thing though, of, yeah. of that connection, like under. Like, I never knew wolves mated for life until watching that show. And then I had right. to go and look it up. And right. I was like, holy garbage. I did not know that. Holy garbage. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it kind of like a totem animal? You don't think you are one, but that's your spirit animal type of thing? Yeah, it's sort of like that. But, like, it's an actual connection. And you can be awoken as a Therian instead of it's like a totem animal. It's more of like just a connection with basic animals that you have for your entire life, but you are not totally sure until you awaken as such. <laughs> well, just remember you're, you're a Bose and us Boses have Beastmaster blood. <laughs> Beastmaster blood. Now, I'm not joking. I cannot tell you the number of times I've been at somebody's house and I see a cat and I'll go, or whatever I do, and the cat will come over and the owner's just staring. He never does that. Yeah. yeah. Or or some dog will come trotting up to me looking to get petted, and they're like, he hates strangers. 
But I, we we have all, all my offspring have had that ability. I mean, it's nothing even conscious. I don't know how to do it, but I know that like, I can walk up to dogs that are, that other people think are vicious and they get excited to see me. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a, I, I look like a wild man that escaped from a zoo or something. A but, wild man that escaped but from a zoo. It can't be because Arthur looks good. He doesn't look like a wild man that recently escaped from the zoo. So he, <laughs> but, and he has that same beast master. I know. I, I actually, a lot of animals do like me because I, I don't know what it is. If it's like a caring or nurturing, like sort of nature, but like, yeah, I always have been like more comfortable with animals. And this isn't the same thing as just to clear this up for anyone who may be thinking it. This isn't the same thing as zoophilia. It's anybody who does or is attracted to animals. That's that's gross. They 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 can't consent to that. So. Now I get that we're not discussing that we're we're discussing an a spiritual a spiritual connection is not the same as wanting to date or yeah, be yeah, intimate with right them. but I'm saying one's a spiritual connection one's a, a, a an an innate understanding of the species as it were mm-hmm. and the other is a weird sexual act that the animal has no ability to consent to. And in some cases, it can be extremely dangerous. Exactly, yeah. And I just wanted to explain that because a lot of people tend to get furries and furians mixed up with that because a lot of people, not a lot of people, but there are a few toxic people who are like that in those communities. And I say communities very lightly for furianthropy because it's not necessarily it's a community, it's who you are as a person. Right, Right, but... In this age of the internet, I guarantee you there's chat rooms for it somewhere. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I there, do. You know, there, there's support. One, 100%. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you could find a Discord channel about it. Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm, I don't even doubt that. I mean, there are theory and therapy communities, but I'm just saying it is a sort of identity that you don't really outwardly show to others. Gotcha. Um, Usually... Now, this is like an addition to the theory and therapy. Obviously, Therians don't need to, but if they want to have a clo- closer connections to the animals that they feel like spiritually connected to, mm-hmm. they will do something called quadrobics. And I'm sure you and mom have seen me do it before. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, crawl on, they crawl on like all fours and wear masks and tails yep. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So people will make as as long as we're not talking about the butt plug tails. Oh no, God, dear no! Why did you have to bring that up? Our daughter's <laughs> having a con- our, our son is having a conversation with you. Sorry, our You're... son is having a conversation. I don't with know you it popped Why in my did head. You have to bring up butt plugs. I don't know it popped in my head. Edit, edit, edit. <laughs> yes, yes, he will definitely be editing that part. Of You're not wrong. <laughs> No, we don't wear um, those types of tails. Mm-hmm. We wear like keychains. You see, the heavy oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we yeah. wear those. We do not wear those. The other ones. Those okay, are I'm just. I thought so too, but I, I just making sure. Yeah, no. So Therian, Therians will usually create masks and create tails out of yarn to connect to the Therian. To the theriotype is what those are called. So, wait. And this is going to be a horrible pun, so I apologize. You're good. If someone were to kill a bunch of these people, they'd be a therial killer. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're forgiven. That was that was too good. That was too good. (laughs) Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, that's yeah that that's probably correct though. That's probably that's probably they'd be a furry hunter and a serial killer, honestly, if they killed me. Uh, So what else is going on in your corner? Or close enough to kill you? Oh no, I can I can beat. We're we're kind of I can beat ass. This is Mama Bear. You don't mess with Mama Bear. I don't mess with Mama Bear. Kind of. Well, you do sometimes. But we're kind of partial to you. We we like you, Arthur. We want to keep you around. And 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 
But here's the thing. I mess with you slightly, like by bringing up things that I know kind of irritate you. And I've even stopped doing that for the most part. <laughs> She's just like, are you kidding me? And gives you the side eye. Anymore, she just rolls her eyes at me. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. Because she, and so I don't. But, um. Hey, Mom. Yeah. I think you dropped something. You think? <laughs> I keep telling you, I'm probably going to fall before the weekend is out because they couldn't get me into the orthopedist. Well, that's not um, I was, now my brain just went, nope, you don't get the rest of this conversation you were having. <laughs> wow. You're picking on me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing I will say, because I've worn it out and I never believed it. Disney and hating juice. No, 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 no. Oh. Julie no. Andrews. And no, 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 no. Okay. What no, no, no. I used to tease her when she was pregnant. Hey, we don't need to feed oh. this child. Yeah. And she would go, what? You're a psychopath. Why would you say something like that? And I would say, entirely joking, but pretending like I believed it a thousand percent. Well, if we raise them not to eat, then they won't eat when they grow up. Therefore, we save money on food. We don't teach them they ever get hungry, so they don't get hungry. Now, this was not meant as a serious argument. It was just something I did because I thought it was funny. It, it stuck in her craw a little bit. A little bit? Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah. and, and now I only bring it up as an example because it's one that we both said, all right, this was bad. No, all right. <laughs> I, this was bad, and I should stop saying it. <laughs> well, yeah, especially man. considering I had to try to explain to him the science of us feeding our babies, Debbie, that you, there's no way for me to turn off the food that goes down <laughs> to the embryo. That's not yeah, a possibility man. in the female anatomy and so i finally got him to shut the hell up but i mean it literally took halfway through the second baby before i got him to shut up <laughs> so yeah um i'm a bit contrary like that yeah <laughs> but just just in general i think people would get their assb if they tried that mess with me because not yeah. only can i pack a punch when i'm angry you can you get that from your mother. But I also have people who are very protective over me, including my parents and my siblings. So if they mess with me, they're messing with the wrong people. So are we exiting the corner for and returning to bon Bonnie Parker, or do you have more? I suppose we are. Okay. Wonder Kid Powers Activate, form of Arthur. Um, here we go. I'm reading this. Thank yes, you yes, you are. Arthur. Take over, Arthur. <laughs> Bonnie's words. Now Bonnie and Clyde are the Barrow gang. I'm sure you oh. all have to have read how they rob and steal, and those who squeal are usually found dying or dead. <laughs> she had away with words, didn't she? She most definitely did. And as yeah. a partial poet, uh, that's actually really interesting to me. Yep, she could write. <clears throat> Born to Henry and Emma Parker in Rowena, Texas, young Bonnie was well known for her academics and had a love of both poetry, which she wrote, and romance mm -hmm. novels. She did not live in Rowena long as eventually her family moved to Cement City in western Dallas after her father's death in 1915. So how long was that? Not long. Not very long at all. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem very long. I I don't know what time this was, like before that, but it doesn't seem very long. Anyway, Bonnie had an older brother named Hubert. Okay. Whom everyone called Buster. Good which, idea. Which, if your name was Hubert, Buster. Yeah. Buster, absolutely. You're Buster now. <laughs> Otherwise, everyone else is going to be Buster and you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll high five that. That's good. <laughs> and a younger sister named Billy. 
standing all of four foot ten and weighing nine. Wait, eight. Billie Eilish is her sister? That's amazing. Did she go through time? <laughs> no, it's not Billie Eilish, just like it's not Billie Jean. Oh, okay. Anyways, standing all of four foot ten and weighing ninety-eight pounds, Bonnie hardly looked the part of a famed future criminal. In 1926, she married her high school sweetheart, Roy Thornton, in a tumultuous, tumultuous. tumultuous marriage that saw them fight constantly. Is that, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But Bonnie was stubborn and refused to revo- divorce him. I didn't know her last name was Bose. <laughs> <laughs> Just one up and one up. <laughs> <laughs> She even had Roy and Bonnie there tattooed on her right knee uh, to celebrate their marriage when Thornton went to jail for a five-year stretch. Around this time, she was working for Marco's Cafe, where she worked until it closed in 1929. So that really wasn't too far away. That was like three years that yep. she worked there. She met Barrow in 1930 when she was his waitress, and the two would enter a relationship. A relationship that was put on pause a month later when Barrow was caught in jail. According to some stories, according to others, they met at a house of mutual acquaintance. Whatever the case, all the sources agree that it was love at first sight. See, here's my thing. <laughs> Yes. Just get divorced with your husband. Why? 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 Stubborn. Did you catch that part? Oh, yeah. Stubborn. I caught that part. I read that part. Just. That's why. There's your answer. There, there's no reason to be that stubborn. Well, back then there was. Back then you were expected to be, uh, you know, like very quiet life and do what you're told. Or just kill your your ex husband and get with the new guy. You know you were doing yeah. that stuff already. Uh, now we're going to take a brief moment for a word from another podcast. This one's a new advertiser with us, uh, Backlook Cinema Podcast. Ooh. So let's hear from them. Hello, friends. Are you feeling down? Do you need a pick-me-up? Well, look no further, for I have the solution. Just go to your nearest podcast store and pick up a box of Backlick Cinema, the podcast. That's right, folks. Backlick Cinema, the podcast, will cure what ails you. The sweet, smooth, and gentle chit-chat of the movies of yesteryear will fulfill your aching nostalgia and improve your overall well-being. The soothing sounds of your host, Zoe Richardson, talking about your favorite moments of these classic films is guaranteed to lift your spirits. The -the behind-the-scenes trivia that you'll learn will fill you with awe and wonderment. Don't hesitate. Try Back Look Cinema, the podcast now with no artificial flavors or colors. Warning, documenting claims of improved well-being or is to any ailment cannot be substantiated. Well, that sounds interesting. Yes, yes, it does. And who whose turn is it now? Believe. It would be mine. I believe it is the moms. Take it away, Ms. Laura. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So to start off with, in Bonnie's words... Mm-hmm. You've read the story of Jesse James, of how he lived and died. If you're still in need of something to read, here's the story of Bonnie and Clyde. During this time, she wrote him several letters, mostly begging him for the sake of their relationship to stay out of trouble after his release. However, she smuggled a pistol into the cell, which Clyde used to escape. Like you do. Like you do. Absolutely. <laughs> she was smart enough not to put it inside her like the little chicky pie in, uh, in Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. You know. Anyway. <laughs> um, so she did. She smuggled a pistol into him. So he was able to escape using that pistol. And then he went on the run. Robbing liquor stores and gas stations mostly to draw attention to himself. Before he was captured once more in Middletown, Ohio, and sent to East Ham Prison Farm in Crockett, Texas. Released in 1932, Clyde was wilder than ever and Bonnie more determined than ever to prove her her loyalty to him. Ah! 
he gets crazier, <laughs> she gets crazier about him. <laughs> Sounds like every kid I've ever known. Yeah. They yeah. began to rob gas stations, grocery stores, and small banks. It's at this point that Bonnie began to appear with them, and there began to be talk of the Barrow Gang. In 1932, Bonnie was captured in a failed bank robbery attempt. While she was jailed in Kaufman, Texas, Clyde went to Hillsboro, where he shot and killed merchant J.W. Butcher. A grand jury was convened over Bonnie's arrest, and she was no billed and freed, allowing her to make her way to hook up with Clyde Barrow once she once more. The two went to a dance in Atoka, Oklahoma, where they were confronted in the parking lot by two officers who attempted to arrest them. They were shot and killed for their trouble. Bonnie and Clyde traveled through middle America, robbing anything they could. In Sherman, Texas, they gunned down a store owner and in Temple, Texas, they shot a citizen who got in their way. They also killed a police officer in a brief shootout in Dallas. And now that we've gotten to that point, maybe we should take a minute for a word from our sponsors. Oh, absolutely. Please check out our sponsors and, and consider purchasing the uh, trinkets they are trying to, to get you to buy. Anything to keep them our sponsors, really. All right, moving on. Uh, Bonnie's word. Uh, the road was so dimly lighted. There were no highway signs to guide but they made up their minds. If all roads were blind, they wouldn't give up till they died. The two tried to settle down and live a normal life. Uh, they settled in a stone bungalow in Joplin, Missouri, with Clyde's brother and sister-in-law. However, they were not good neighbors, and their late nights and noise often got the police called, and the police band began to suspect uh, that they were dealing with what what at that point become the notorious Barrow Gang. Uh, when police decided to investigate the foursome, they were met with a hail of bullets that left two more lawmen dead and allowed the Barrow Gang to escape. They also left behind six rolls of film, which is where most of the photos of Bonnie and Clyde come from. After their failed attempt at domestic bliss, they traveled all over the Midwest committing crimes. Kansas, Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Iowa, Illinois, and Arkansas. I've played rooms in all those places. Uh, all enjoyed the occasional and rather violent company of the Barrow Gang. On June 10th, 1933, Bonnie was burned when the car rolled over an embankment near the city of Wellington, Texas. The gang fled to a nearby farmhouse where Bonnie's burn leg was treated, and they located a car to take them to where they were going. Uh, officials sent to investigate the crash were kidnapped and later dropped off alive and unhurt in Oklahoma. They passed through Alma, Arkansas, where they shot and killed the town marshal. They were up against it in Platte City, Missouri, where they had gone to lay low. Instead, they got into another fight with law enforcement. Buck Barrow was shot and killed and his wife was arrested. But Bonnie and Clyde managed to get away. In January 1934, Bonnie and Clyde turned up at the East Ham Farm. Not as prisoners, but rather to free their friend Raymond Hamilton. It was around this time that the head of the Texas prison system hired former captain of the Texas Rangers, Francis Frank Hamer, to track down Bonnie and Clyde. In 34, Hamer began tracking the fugitives. On Easter Sunday, 
uh, the couple stopped in the middle of the highway to toss some empty whiskey bottles out of the car. Two police officers, thinking they were just motorists with a stalled car, stopped to offer help, only to be shot by Barrow and Parker. Supposedly, and this is where I stop liking them, uh, Bonnie stood over one of the officers, shooting him in the face with her sawed-off shotgun. Because that's what Bonnie do. Uh, as they passed through Commerce, Oklahoma, they committed their final murder, that of a constable from the small Oklahoma town. After that, that they knew the law was closing in, and they began to flee while the police and Hamer furiously pursued them. And now this seems like a wonderful moment to take a minute to talk to our guest. Yay! Yay! Hey. Hey. How are you? I'm good. This is really fun. I've never done a podcast before. Well, we're so glad that you would come and make us make ours your very first one, and you are welcome to come back whenever. Um, okay. We usually, usually lets you talk a little earlier in the show, but I think he was just excited and wanted to get all of the history out. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I was actually just trying to figure things out. You were color coding everything. Yeah, well, it's not even it's not even just that. I was just like whenever I I start to write the show, I try to figure out places for the breaks we're going to take and stuff right. like that so right. I can go, okay, I don't want to break up the flow here, I, you know. That's yeah. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes I'm able to like I did this week do, you know, something thematic, which I really dig. I think it's working out better than I hoped, but I won't yeah. know for sure till I actually edit it tomorrow, so. Good. Good, good, good. But uh yeah, um so Tell us about yourself. Oh, ask me questions. That's probably easier. No, I'm okay, kidding. Okay, so let okay. me start with what is Shop Joby? Oh, Shop Joby is uh, a new online retail store that my sister and I own. Uh, we recently opened it, and we're very, very proud of it. It. We wanted to have a store that was fun to shop at, not just because mm -hmm. of the products, but it looked good. It was easy to use. We have handpicked, literally handpicked. Oh my God, it's taken forever. Handpicked <laughs> every item on the store. And we've got, uh, you know, stuff that's well, it's already made. It's all already made, but we have handcrafted and then we have manufactured items. So there's, nice. um, there's handcrafted soaps and jewelry and um, uh, we have patterns. Uh, so people can buy the patterns to make all kinds of different things. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, not the handcrafted, but onward. We have steampunk. We've got jewelry. We've got wedding. We've got you know, holidays. We've got stuff for little kids, big kids. You know, we've got anywhere things from $5 up to $2,500, which, whoa, they're cool. They're like the remote controlled things, you know, or the, the sporting equipment, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, we've got things for babies. And we've got things for older people. It's just really good. And we'd love for you all to go take a look, see what you think, perhaps buy something. If not, share it on your, your Facebook page for us. We'd love it. We, we share it on the Facebook page. Uh, we'll also drop it out in our Twitter. Okay. Uh, where awesome. we We've got like 10,000 followers. Wow. I'll uh, go and do a little shopping trip and I'll do a YouTube video of it and put it up on our YouTube channel that, as well. That would be awesome. Um, if you and can get discount doing... code, I'll throw that out there. So hopefully it'll up your business. Yes, I will get you one before you do that. I will send you a discount code. Absolutely. Just for our that podcast. Perfect. People. Um, and when I'm not doing that, I'm a web designer. Um which I have very competent. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's right. Yeah. Dean, you've seen my work. Yeah. Um, so I have fun with that. And um, um, I'm a little older now, not much, but a little. So I'm doing some traveling. So that's, that's my life. Where, where are you traveling to? Um, well, I went to Canada. I went to Florida. I went to Las Vegas, which I'm going back to in uh, next month. Uh, nice. Yeah, yeah I, I, love I love Vegas. Vegas. Oh my Vegas God. is my favorite place in the world. Yeah. Not for the gambling, not 
partially for the food, but the best part is just the people watching. You will watch. Oh people my god, I know. Make lifetime mistakes. Yeah, like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And yeah. you can't, you know, just get wow. Do you know the yeah. havoc you just caused yourself? Yeah. You can't do that. But boy, it sure feels good to, to in that moment go, man, that ain't glad I didn't, that ain't me. I did well, not do and, that. You know, in Vegas, it stays there. So you can do what you need to do and then come home and have vented. That's that. Yeah. But I do go for gambling. I love to gamble. So, yeah. But I only gamble when I know I can afford to lose because I don't win. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's not an issue as long as you do so within your abilities. That's right. Well, that's yeah. what, you know, it's no different than going to a movie. People spend, now people send, spend hundreds of dollars for one seat at a concert. I it know. Used to go and spend a hundred dollars at Ameristar or take a weekend to Vegas. And I have put aside the money to do that. Then people shouldn't look down on that. It's absolutely right. within your purview to do that. I love that word. I never get a chance to use it. And it just popped into my head. It was fabulous. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, I love it. He's so fabulous. Um, I will add, and I did mention this at the top of the show, uh, back when I was still doing the stand-up thing, um, which uh, it's, been there, it's been a minute, but God, I, I do miss that moment on stage. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, but back when I was, uh, she was the first person to invite me to do an LGBTQ gig that I really felt comfortable at and it showed in the videos. Oh God, I love those crowds. They were always so kind to me. <laughs> oh, they loved you. They loved you. You were, Dean saved our little tiny pride, our very first pride in 2012. And oh, he came I'm in. I'm so and proud of him for that. that just, he, and that's one of his proud things too, Debbie. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, he brought I in. I have my T-shirt. Oh, I wear it proudly. Yes. Yeah, I hope so. Yes, yeah, and he is. Every time I've asked him to do something for Pride, he was right there. He well, never, even on his anniversary, anniversary one. Yeah, but he even came up on his anniversary. So that yep. was pretty cool. That yeah. was oh. five minutes ago. It just must be the time of day, babe. Yeah. yeah, people are just getting home or or just getting to that office job or whatever. Edit, edit. Trying to wrap up your day. And uh, just doing this job, podcasting, boy, St. Joe used to be the place to be, kind of. Or, or or maybe not, kind of. I mean, yeah. Jesse James. Oh, yeah. James was out there. Oh, yeah. Bonnie yeah. and Clyde. Oh, yeah. Bonnie and it's Clyde bad. were out there. So many, yeah, so yeah. many gangsters and criminals ran through that place. Oh, I know. Jesse James, I'm actually, sure. I lived on a farm uh, 10 minutes north of St. Joe in Savannah. And the barn there is where he would hide out. You know, not just once. I mean, he'd go rob right. and come back and hide out in the barn. And, yeah, I found that out. It's like, whoa. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's so that I, I've just got a whole new appreciation for uh, local history, which we don't get to do often, but yeah. I try to throw it in as often as we can. Uh, and uh, through you, I met a fellow named R.J. Jackson. Um, he worked on a pride somewhere and we got to talking. So uh, but he threw us an interesting one about um, Harry Houdini debunking yes. a spiritualist in St. Joseph, Saint Joe Joseph well, Missouri. Yeah. Oh, I vaguely remember hearing something about that. Yeah. They're yeah. very, well, we very have an episode on it. Go check it out. And yeah. we also uh, have one on, um, uh, what was his name down in, uh, not Boonville. Uh, Samuel Clemens? No, no, no. The guy, the one guy, the guy that the whole town killed. Oh, yeah. Oh, in uh, Skidmore. Yeah, Skidmore, Missouri. Oh, yeah. That we have an yeah, I live him too. I live six miles from that town. That and everything you've heard, oh my God. Yeah, the whole town knows and they knew and and everybody was behind it and you know that was okay with it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that and there is 
we need to talk because if you haven't done a full thing on Skidmore, there's more than just McElroy. Well, we, I will we, fill you in. We 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 did we mentioned some things like like Skidmore was one of the places where a woman was um, adopting puppies, uh -huh. and, a woman, and a woman came and and, yes. and killed, killed her, her and, took the baby. Took the mm -hmm. baby. Yeah, yes, I remember her. Yeah, we mentioned that, we and, and, and then the other disappeared. Yeah, Brandon and, Perry. Yep. yep, and they're all uh, from uh, the same family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I've been and and I've been told it's an Indian that that some people think it's an uh, not a Native American curse that was put on the family, but maybe I don't know. I don't know. They've had some really bad luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. So, but yeah, we did we did an episode on him. Man, that guy. Woo. Yeah. I saw oh. him one time and he was just evil. He just evil poured off of him. And it was yeah. just it was spooky. It was just oh, and he had no it was in Walmart and nobody would be it, we were in line, but nobody would get close to him. You know, it's like wow. Yeah. That is yeah. Wild. That, yeah. Ken Rex McElroy finally yeah. remembers him. Yeah, that's yeah. him. That was the yeah. psycho. Yeah, that 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 mf -er. And then yeah. his wife's like last, like even up to a few years ago, she was still defending him. Oh and yeah, she still does. She still does. Yeah, I think she was probably psychologically damaged with shots being fired while she's in the truck and he dies and she didn't get hit. You know, and I, I can't even imagine sitting there while you hear shots being fired and, and your husband is, you know, dead. And then all the women in the town came up, got her and whisked her away before anything else. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. No, I did not know you had a personal connection with that. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I do all my own research, so. I am limited in the uh, information I have time to find and collect. There um, you go. And you do a very fine job. He does, doesn't he? he yes, does so he well. does. We're so proud of him. Yes. We have an episode coming up that I'm ma unfortunately making him do the research on because it's going to be a rough one. But I, I just, I had never heard about Judy Barzi and, and we're going to talk about her in a couple of weeks and all of the, the terrible things that happened to that sweet little girl. And oh yeah, stepfather from hell kind of stuff. No, oh, actual yeah. father. Oh yeah, that's right. It is her actual father. Yes, father oh, from hell is. part. Ugh. Yeah. All right. And this is coming from me, and you know, Arthur would tell you I'm not always a great dad. What? Arthur wouldn't say that. Arthur loves you. I know. I tease. I tease. That's why I call him Arthur. Arthur. Well, because, okay, it's a very specific English process. accent, but there is a very specific English a accent where Arthur is said as Arthur. Like, yeah. what you doing, Arthur? I think yeah. it's cute. And I don't know where the accent is to tell you. And it may be a, a Hollywood thing. I've never seen an actual Englishman do it. So mm -hmm. it may, may be something that I've only seen in movies or heard yeah. in you know, other sources, but there's a very specific archetype. We'll go with archetype. Of, of okay. there, and, and that's all that is. Uh, anyway. Um, whew. Breathe. <laughs> I get so wound up and so excited to do this show. All yeah. right. Take a minute. Um, so on a personal note, uh, you're the only person I've ever worked for or with that I decided was a member of my family and not yes. too long ago, I was talking to my biological mother and um, she started talking about, you know, my friends and I mentioned you and she has never met you, but I was like, yeah, you know, and this and that and the other. And she's like, well, is she related? Not as spirit near as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's 
wonderful when we can meet people that aren't biologically related, but we know they're our sister or brother or aunt. Uh, and, and they stay that way and they feel the same way. That's what, you know, you can choose your, you choose your family. Sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't agree more. All right. So do I need to read now? Welcome to Shop Joby, our online store where you can explore a unique collection of products, including exquisitely crafted handmade soap, charming whimsical chicken statues, and sophisticated interior decor items. Discover over 1,500 carefully curated products that have been handpicked to bring a sense of joy and whimsy to every corner of your life. Shop online at www.shopjoby.com. I'm nervous. Yeah, yes. Whenever you are ready, the next section is yours. Yes, All right. Ma'am. Well, yeah, I know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I've done this. I played this game a minute. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm ready. All okay. right. So another piece of Bonnie's poetry. If a policeman is killed in Dallas and they have no clue or guide, if they can't find a fiend, they just wipe their slate clean and hang it on Bonnie and Clyde. I like that one. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be talking about Francis Hamer. Yep. Um, it's worth taking some time to look into Frank Hamer, since it was he who led the ambush that we are about to discuss. Frank was born in 1884 in Wilson County in a tiny city called Fairview. His father was a blacksmith. Frank was one of five children, four of which became Texas Rangers. Frank grew up in San Saba County, Texas, which was also the home of what was, uh, which was also home to the man who wrote the Pecos Bill stories. And in Oxford County, Texas, which is down on what locals refer to as the Lano, Frank would lo- later joke in life about being one of the few Oxford educated rangers. I guess they're thinking Oxford, England, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, While working on a neighbor's ranch, he caught a horse thief, which so impressed the local sheriff that the sheriff recommended he join the Texas Rangers, which he did. He would be a ranger on and off throughout his life, often resigning to take other jobs. In addition to a ranger, he also served as the marshal of a lawless town in Texas that had a lot of shootouts till he came along and enforced both order and peace. He served as a special ranger for the Texas Cattlemen's Association, spent time as a marshal and a deputy fighting against gun runners who were supplying arms to folks during the Mexican Revolution, as well as against gangsters and moonshiners who were selling illegal whiskey during Prohibition. And probably a lot of other people were too. In 1918, he threatened a senator who was looking into some slayings by Texas Rangers in the Rio Grande Valley. He also fought against the Ku Klux Klan, saving 22 people from lynching. That's awesome. Um, In 1928, he found a ring of bankers that paid $5,000 bounties for dead bank robbers. So several police officers would set up these 'er ne'er-do-wells and incompetent criminals to rob banks and then shoot them for the bounty. He exposed this ring through, though the bankers continued to pay the blood bounties for some times afterwards. You could just go kill anybody and say they were trying to rob a bank. How would they know? Exactly. Especially back then. Yeah. Uh, Finally, a woman was elected governor of Texas, which blew my mind when I read that. And he quit rather than work for her, I guess, because she was a woman, though he was given a special commission as captain that allowed him to work on cases when he wanted to. He eventually became famous for his handling of the Barrow Gang. He was called by some of the greatest, wait, he has been called by some one of the greatest lawmen of the 20th century, just as he was a controversial law enforcement figure because he was awful fond of bringing in criminals that he'd shot as opposed to capturing live. And that's mine. (laughs) All right. And, and as much as, as much as I like him for the, the Ku Klux Klan thing, uh, 
He wasn't all, he didn't always win. There was a time when the, they had a black man who was accused of rape. And so he, he was watching the jail. Well, the town came and set fire to the jail. So they locked him in a vault that they had. Well, and then the town started shooting. So they fled the jail. There's just too many people with guns. He had to flee along with his marshals. So, um, by the time they got back, he had lived through the fire. Though he survived in the vault, but they brought dynamite, so that had been cracked open, uh, and they decapitated the poor fella, and then set about burning the black part of town. Oh, wow, that's awful! <laughs> so he didn't always win, but he did make a difference, and I like that. But he yeah. was also kind of an ass. Yeah, you know, I yeah. think we had to be a little bit of an ass back in in those days. But anyway, so <clears throat> again from Bonnie. They'll go down together. They'll bury them side by side. To few, it'll be grief. To the law, a relief. But it's death for Bonnie and Clyde. Now the pair were in full flight, trying to get to their hideout in Louisiana, knowing the law was on their tail. Unfortunately, that's not the only place the law was. As they approached their hideout in Black Lake, Louisiana, they drove into a trap where lawmen began firing at the couple. 167 bullets were fired, and both Bonnie and Clyde were riddled with bullets. Bonnie and Clyde's love and adventure ended at 9.15 a.m. on May 13, 1934. Bonnie was found holding a machine gun, a sandwich, and a pack of cigarettes. Clyde was nearly unrecognizable, holding only a pistol. Their car and bodies were put on display in Dallas, and that is the end of their part in their story. So uh, let's briefly touch on the legacy of Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, multiple movies have been made about Bonnie and Clyde, the most famous starring Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway in 1967, where they were repackaged kind of as young Shakespearean lovers almost. Um, still a decent movie, but yeah. Um, also, Netflix recently made a movie, 2019, called The Highwaymen that addressed the hunt for Bonnie and Clyde from the point of view of the law. Uh, they have turned up in a couple episodes, a couple episodes of Expedition Unknown as Josh Gates. Josh Gates. Man crush. Thank you. Man crush, most definitely. All right. Uh, as Josh Gates uh, has accompanied some who seek the gang's loot, which many feel is still hidden. The couple has been celebrated in a variety of songs as well, and a huge has, mythology has built up about their love and relationship. I believe there was also, at one point, you don't have it on here, but I believe at one point there was also, there was also a, um, oh, <laughs> a mini series, a mini series on AMC or something that was based off of them, I believe. It possible. I didn't see it in the research, yeah. but I mean, again, that there's been a lot done. Yeah. So they, they're big in popular culture and they're often repackaged as these star crossed young lovers and even doing it. I feel that energy like she was a poet. He was a musician. They, if, they, if it had been a different time, if they had been in different areas, yeah. different lives. Oh. You know, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it's just, it's crazy to me, but like 
And that's uh, that's the story of Bonnie and Clyde, I guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, yep. uh, any I mean, there's there's really nothing to discuss except for, I mean, they were still basically kids, and it was a very, but I mean, these kinds of things happen all the time now. I mean, it with with, so I think what they really were were they were just kind of the 1900s wake up to hey. Your, your kids are out here in this world and they're going to make their way no matter how they need to do it. And I think that's why they kind of had that mythology and all of the conversation and, and everything. I mean, yes, they killed quite a few people, but they, um, they, they also just, if it had not been right after the Dep Great Depression, if it had not been if they had not grown up in these really poor, humble communities and not had access to the things that they needed, they might not have gotten as hungry as they did and turned to the crimes that they turned to. And I can definitely see that point of view. I, I, I just, I, I, I'm with them. I'm with them up to the point, And I didn't, I don't, I didn't mention it, but there's a, there, when she, when she stands over the cop, and shoots him in the face with her, his head bounced off the pavement. She giggled about that and yeah. made it to Clyde. Yeah, no, and, and you know, I'm not to, I think that once you've made that deal with the devil and you're in the moment of it, like you kind of lose in who you are, Moors at that point, and you're just in the moment. It's like being high, it's a different kind of response. But your body's getting that same endorphin rush because you're doing something that is socially unacceptable. I mean, that's basic psychology. Yeah, because it, it's that it's that thrill, it's that rush. It's why we have people who are addicted gamblers. It's why we have people who are addicted thieves who are you know addicted to the criminal lifestyle. Not even necessarily for the drugs or the money, but they get the high from that action. And I think by that time, there had been so much blood on their hands that at this point, it's like almost that hysterical giggle of, well, I might as well enjoy myself because I'm already going to hell, you know? That mm -hmm. kind of idea. And not that that makes it right, not that that is any kind of excuse for it, but I, I feel like I understand that mentality at least. Right. Yeah. Right. And I guess, you know, and I get why they became huge. It was just after the Great Depression. Yep. Uh, and and people did not like the police because of prohibition. Yep. And so. Well, and there were a lot of dirty cops back then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even, even the one who ended up taking them down had tried to help against other corrupt police and judges and things were nowhere near as radically um, required as they are now. There were no things to stop people from <coughs> abusing their power, abusing their money, abusing the women and children around them. I mean, we just have basic information on what these kids actually went through. Yeah, well, I know a guy that retired from very small town police force. Um, Tracy, maybe small town, Missouri. If you said the name, I'd go, yeah, there. Uh, anyway, but he wasn't the sheriff, he, but he was a deputy. But one night they caught a guy that, I don't know, the guy was saying some stuff to him when they put him in lockup or whatever. So he comes in the middle of the night, they let him in, he walks in the guy's jail cell, wakes him up and just beats the piss out of him. Yep. And, he said that wasn't too long before he retired. He said he punched him till he was tired of hitting him. Oh God! I don't know how long that is. That but. is sick and twisted. That is sick and twisted. But I mean, it's like we don't think about it nowadays. But my grandmother was murdered in a drunken head-on collision when my mom. Um, was 16, so that would have been 66, in 1966. And the man who 
hit her and killed her and almost killed her husband and left three children, left four children with no mother. He walked away. He never, he didn't even spend a night in jail because there were no laws against driving while intoxicated then. Yep. I mean, it's, it's that kind of thing. So it was just a different, it was a different world. Oh, oh, oh yeah. There's a comedian named Bill Hicks who did a joke. It was like, uh, you know, back when he was growing up, cops were more like, oh, it's just a drunk guy operating a motor vehicle. Let's get back in the car, Timmy. Hope we didn't mess up your buzz any. Yep, absolutely. I feel like part of the reason she laughed about what she did and part of the reason they were so cruel to the people who had gotten in their way is because they felt that they agreed, that the other people agreed with the way of every how everybody else was living because they were grown up, they were growing up in such a poor and very like desolate place. So they felt like they had to get their their rights in a way that was so violent and physical that nobody else agreed with it. But at least they got what they finally needed. Mm-hmm. And when p- other people got in their way because they thought it was wrong. Oh my God! I'm in my head. I'm writing this movie where they did go a different way, but I'm not going to call them Bonnie and Clyde. I don't know. It'll, it'll be amazing. Um, I just feel like they did it because they they needed more than what they were given, and they were just like the rest of you are rich. Give me your money. Give me your stuff. Yeah, I'm tired they, of this. They were they were young and and they wanted to make remake. And they even they even tried to stop, but when people kept calling on them and saying, "These people are here, these people are here," they're not going to hurt you. I mean, they're like making a lot of noise, but they trying they're trying to stop. That's true. They They, did try to stop, stop. and 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 more people people, called on them, and they were just like, "You got to be careful. You got to be careful." Well, and but see, I I don't like that message. they had still done wrong up to that point. Right. Obviously not. It's not good that they did any of it. I'm just saying that that might have been the method to their madness. I can see if they were just like, okay, people, we're going to try to stop. We're going to try to just live our own lives now. But when people go against you and they're just like, yo, what the heck? Was, what are these people doing? Uh, guys, I think they're here. And then they're just like, well, heck, we were trying to stop, but okay. Then since you wanted us to start up again, guess we go killing people now. <clears throat> yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I often wonder if they blamed it on pulp comics because that's what he would have been reading as he came up. Uh, mm. Clyde Bar- Barrow. Um, and they're not even really comics. They were just called pulps, but they were uh, the forerunners to comic books, uh, collected stories, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft got a lot of print in them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's what he would have been reading, and they're definitely true crime pulps, and they definitely glamorize that sort of thing. So, yeah, you know, I wonder if that was called out back at the time, because it sure gets called out now. All right. Well, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did do you have any final thoughts, Debbie? I, I don't. I've just I've really enjoyed this. Thank you for having me. It's very interesting. I, I'm really glad you're going to be able to edit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm, he has to edit us all the time. Debbie. Yeah. Don't worry about yeah. That. Editing is what I do. So this all is right. great. And I would love to come back. Well, awesome. We will have you back. Yeah. Um, that's it. And that's our show. That's our show. That's our show. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, thanks for keeping us in the Good Pods Top 100. Uh, let's see. Ed, wow. Join our Facebook group. Okay, somehow I lost. It's whole- okay, I got this. I got this. Come join our Facebook group. I run our Facebook group now. It's awesome. It's fun. We'll have a drop party tomorrow evening that our new show has dropped. Dean always has that out by 10 p.m. on Thursday evening. So I have a recurring um, drop reminder so you don't ever have to remember. If you're part of our Facebook group, you will get that notification every week. So make sure to join. Yes, absolutely. Make sure that you join. 
Also, we want to make sure that we say thank you to... First and foremost, uh, my the guy. Uh, Bill Barron. Barron. Thank you. Uh, my brain sometimes. I forget my own name. All right. First and foremost, Bill Barron. And I'm going to spell that last name for you. B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T. Why do I do that? Well, Bill is the guy that does our theme music. Uh, and he, since he's a musician, he also does live events. If you need music for a project, he's your guy. And you're going to reach him at Bill Barrett at sbcglobal.net. Uh, I told you you need to know how to spell his name. Uh, thanks also go to Paige uh, Elmore of the Reverie Crime Podcast. Now, she is, she is out of the podcasting game for, for the moment, but she has left us a lot of good quality podcasts to listen to. And she also is an addicted to Canva, which she combines with some of our own Arfur's artwork to do uh, so our own Arfur's artwork to do some of our logo art. So thank you, Paige. Thank you, Paige. Uh, thanks again to Aaron Gnurk of the Big Dumb Fun Show for continuing to promote us locally. And once again, thanks to Blue Bows for becoming our new sound engineer. She's responsible for the siren that you've been hearing off and on through this episode. Um, and uh, join us next week as we look into the Beast of Gavaron. Awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.